Weijia Zhang is at the White House. Weijia, I want to ask you about Ke Kennedy's replacement. Do you, we know this could be pivotal, uh, especially potentially back to abortion rights. President, uh, the White House Press Secretary Sarah Huckabee Sanders has said that the president will not talk to judges about specific cases. Is the president hoping to push a conservative social agenda with this pick, or what's your sense at this point? Well, Rena, you know, the president in the White House continues to say that he will not explicitly talk about Roe versus Wade and uh, these candidates' views on that uh, to determine whether they would ultimately overturn the case. But the fact is he does not have to. He is choosing from a list of 25 names that have been carefully vetted, 25 names that have been out there now for almost two years uh, that we know are conservatives. And so even though he doesn't have that conversation, certainly he knows uh, that there is no confusion about where they would stand. And you're right, this is such a pivotal decision and he is moving very quickly because he knows how important it is to seal this deal uh, before it could get caught up in the midterm elections. And that's why that list of 25 has now been whittled down to six or seven. And we can tell you that just yesterday here at the White House, the president met with four candidates already. The Washington Post reporting those as federal judges Brett Kavanaugh, Amy Coney Barrett, Amal Thapar, and Raymond Kethledge. In addition to that, he said he would interview two or three more as early as today and then make his decision in the coming days before announcing that name on Monday. Weijia, you know that Democrats want to delay this decision until after midterms. Is there a sense of how this open seat could affect midterms on both sides? Well, that's exactly what Republicans are scrambling to avoid. Uh, even though in that very controversial decision, Republicans essentially blocked President Obama's pick for the Supreme Court and cited the reason as why is because it was an election year. They are now making the distinction that, uh, you know, that the confirmation process should be held during an election year, apparently just when it's a presidential election. But the GOP is arguing that when it's midterm elections, they should proceed as they would. And in this case, it is very quickly because they are aware that if this drags on through the midterms uh, and there is a change in the uh, power in the Senate, that that could really impact the pick because right now they do have a slight majority. Um, but even that said, you know, the president doesn't necessarily have the full support of Republicans, which he needs. He needs both GOP conservatives and moderates to uh, confirm this hearing, uh, to confirm this nominee in that hearing. Uh, because he can't really bank on any Democrats voting for that person, even though we should mention the last time that he nominated somebody to the Supreme Court, three Democrats did vote uh, for that person, Neil Gorsuch, of course, who is now one of the justices. Yeah, you make it's sort of fascinating to see the math and exactly where this could go, especially with uh, Democrats in red states. Weijia, I want to also ask you about the Democrats' move to, to make some noise over trying to uh, abolish ICE. Some Democrats are calling for that. Do you get the sense that the White House is going to use that uh, as some sort of a tactic going into midterms to use against Democrats, especially when it comes to border security? Absolutely. And we're already seeing that play out uh, at different rallies that I've been at where President Trump is talking about the midterm elections, stumping for a Republican candidate. And the problem is that he's laying uh, an umbrella over all the Democrats. And he's saying it's as simple as this. We, as in the Republicans, want strong borders and we want to protect uh, our country from dangerous uh, migrants who are coming here, they, being the Democrats, want to have open borders and abolish ICE. The problem is it's, of course, not all Democrats who are making this call to abolish ICE. There certainly are several who are being very vocal about it. And those uh, are early front runners, potential names for the 2020 presidential election. For example, Senator Kirsten Gillibrand of New York, Senator Kamala Harris of California, they have called uh, to abolish ICE. Even Bernie Sanders, who uh, obviously is very critical of the immigration process, has not done that. You know, other Democrats have acknowledged that there is a flaw in the way uh, that ICE works, but they're not willing to go and cross that line. But the problem, again, is that President Trump, the White House, they're casting this message that all Democrats are now making this very uh, bold call to abolish the organization. I want to ask you also about the uh, president slamming the 
the National Security Agency for deleting call records, calling the move, quote, a disgrace and a witch hunt. Is the president suggesting that the intelligence errors have some sort of connection with Mueller's probe? You know, we don't really know because the president didn't specify, but certainly what we do know is that that term, witch hunt, uh, is tied to the Russia investigation and special counsel Mueller's probe when it comes to President Trump. So uh, we can infer that he is talking about this and somehow linking uh, the NSA's action to uh, the investigation. But as far as CBS News has learned, this action, uh, first of all, didn't delete phone calls and texts per se, but rather some call records, including the, the, the actual phone numbers and the dates, given the complicated way the NSA receives uh, sensitive information. As far as we know and, and have talked with uh, our sources, that had nothing to do with the Mueller probe. Probe. So it's President Trump who seems to be uh, connecting these dots. But again, we don't know because that tweet was so cryptic in just saying the witch hunt continues. I want to ask you, Ouija, also about Secretary of State Mike Pompeo's uh, trip to North Korea, expected to meet with Kim Jong un later this week. You know, he, they want to push this deal forward. Is there any sense from the White House, any sort of hesitation in light of, of these new intelligence reports that they're still continuing with their facilities? No. I mean, the White House's messaging is that they're not going to comment on these now several intelligence reports. And as far as they are concerned, they continue to tell us that there is ongoing process, progress. And uh, actually, during the press briefing with Sarah Sanders, our colleague Major Garrett pressed her about why the public should believe that there's progress. Can you point to any evidence? Can you tell us why uh, Kim Jong-un appears to be actually working with the U.S., working toward denuclearization. And uh, Sanders pointed to the fact that there haven't been recent missile tests or detonations, but other than that, did not expand, just to say over and over again, as other reporters also piled on, that progress is being made. So that is the message. Again, she is not responding to any of these reports that not only is North Korea intending to, to keep some of its current weapons, but also possibly expanding. And those are two two very serious uh, conclusions that the intelligence community might be drawing, but uh, they are not acknowledging it at this point, just saying that, you know, talks are ongoing. As you can see, Secretary Pompeo is making more progress uh, as he visits North Korea again soon. Okay, Weijia Zhang coming to us from the White House. Weijia, thank you.